Good afternoon and welcome to today's webinar on sustainable mining operations hosted on behalf of Donaldson, the largest provider of unique filtration technologies and high quality filters and parts. My name is Shannon Derejo and I'll be assisting the speakers in today's session. Before we get started, please note the chat and the Q&A are available to you. Please post your questions in the Q&A and your comments in the chat. Both the Q&A and the chat are at the bottom of your screen. Please also be aware that we are recording this webinar and we'll send the recording to you when it's available. Today's panel will explore how advanced filtration solutions and services increase mining profitability. They will focus on real world applications and sustainable solutions for mining maintenance, highlighting the role of Donaldson's advanced filtration technology and services. During the session, they will cover practical strategies to minimize downtime and enhance equipment reliability. In addition, you will learn more about Donaldson's strategic partnership approach and the support available through local Donaldson partners and supply chain opportunities across Africa. The speakers discussing this topic include Cameron Diesel, the sales director at Donaldson, Paul Pereira, territory manager for the Sub-Saharan Africa region at Donaldson, and Axel Hustain, general manager of AES Group. So without further ado, I'll hand over now to our speakers to start the discussion. Thank you for the introduction, uh, for the very kind introduction and um, welcome to all the participants and to the panelists. We will be hosting Paul Pereira and Axel, as was mentioned earlier. So let me introduce Paul. One of the statements that Paul always makes that sticks with me from a Donaldson perspective is your success is my success. And that's what drives his persistence and stamina doing business across Africa. He has been operating in Africa for more than 30 years and he's been with Donaldson for about five years. Axel, as you can see on the screen, is the general manager of AES or Afric Equipment and Services. He is one of our authorized distributors functioning primarily in West Africa. When I say one of our distributors, just to be clear, we do have about 100 authorized distributors across Africa. And what we're going to see from Axel today is really a premium Donaldson service offering. And I'll probably refer to him as our partner as we go through the presentation rather than distributor, because we do see our distributors as partners. A bit about myself, I've been with Donaldson for 10 years. I am the sales director for Africa in this case, just to, to clarify that. And I've been in this role long enough to see that when our customers and end users implement our optimal filtration solutions, their businesses improve. So I've been in this chair long enough to see that. So what we're going to start with is just a video showing at a very high basic level some of our an overview of our service offerings. Just setting the scene here, the first product you will see is air filtration, because anyone in Africa knows this is a dusty, corrosive environment. Air filtration protects your engine keeps the dust out, keeps your engine functioning well, critical to, critical to success. Fuel filtration, we need clean fuel to optimize your running and your maintenance. Loop filtration, looking after your components once again. Hydraulic filtration. And last but not least, clean fuel and lube solutions to make sure the fuel is clean before it goes into your system. So those are just some of the um, products that we do. Moving on to the webinar for today and the topics we're going to cover. What we want to look at is reducing maintenance costs and increasing equipment uptime. In the second bullet point over there, you'll see the phrase total cost of ownership. And our aim at Donaldson is to reduce total cost of ownership for mines operating. And one of our partners that do that, AES, will present on their customized service model and their partnership strategies to bring these benefits to their customers. A phrase that I really do like that was given to me for this presentation is from the lab to the mine. Donaldson, we have all sorts of certifications that I'll talk about at the end of the presentation. We are a global company, global technology, innovating, but that means nothing to people operating on a mine. We know that the difference is made on the mine site. And that's key to us. And what we want to show is how we apply 
validated filtration technology to optimize these mining operations. And of course, how filtration technology has the potential to advance your business. We also think that after being in Africa for more than 50 years and operating primarily in mining, that we do understand some of the challenges our customers face. And operational efficiency and uptime is something that's always given to us as a challenge for a mine site. We know the penalties on mine sites for equipment being down. We know what those lost hours cost the mine. We know that we need to keep machines up and running. And in dealing with that, we generally look at and improve long-term operational cost reductions. Again, I'll put our Donaldson phrase in there, total reducing total cost of ownership. And a key for us, Donaldson globally, is improved overall sustainability. And we believe that the efforts we make on your mine site improve your sustainability while we keep that clearly in focus for Donaldson. And what does all this mean to you watching this webinar? How do we advance your business? I'm going to repeat for the last time in this introduction, we want to make a difference in the field. We've got trials. We've got proven trials, how we have optimized filtration offerings and the benefits that it's brought to the end users operating equipment on mine sites. And a key takeaway as well will be clean fuel. We know that this is key to optimizing machine operations. We need, or you need clean fuel on site to get maximum efficiency. And that's what we look at giving you. So what I will do from here is hand over to Paul, who will start by discussing a number of trials and how applying endurance filters and various Donaldson technologies in the field has brought benefit to his customers. Again, with examples of case studies that we have um, we've put together. Over to you, Paul. Thank you very much, Cameron, and uh, thanks for everybody that's joined from near and far. Firstly, thanks to Crema Media. Uh, we're honored to be able to present on your platform here. Um, secondly, Donaldson works through a distributed network and partners globally, as Cameron uh, mentioned. We support them as they are an extension of us, so they can offer you, the end user, the best solutions, on the ground support, expertise, stock in country, and so much more. And we cannot do it without them. So a big shout out goes to, to the distributor who played a vital role in the success of this trial. Um, so let's get on with the case study. The case study is uh, on air filters specifically today. Um, we were talking about the Komatsu 860E, 960E dump trucks, and also the Lieber T284s. Uh, so let's, uh, let's move forward. Um, the mine's challenges, what they were experiencing is frequent maintenance, which caused lots of downtime, high filter usage, which means high filter ma uh, wastage, um, changing filters at 500 hour change outs. They were on a cost saving drive and we wanted to help them save costs. So we suggested to increase service intervals. They asked how. So we said, let's do a trial. We'll show you how. Um, as a result, and just make note of this number and take note of the time frame. The result was a $75,000 savings only on the air filters, the two air filters on each machine. Um, and over the time frame of this trial, which was around five months. Okay. What we also said is cheaper filters are not the answer. Um, and rather work on efficiency and changing on restriction in this case. So what was the scenario on site? The scenario was that the covers were not Donaldson's. Um, so we reintroduced our filter back into the well fit part, which was our Donaldson SSG housing. It is a cellulose media filter. Uh, we did the trial on the 860E and the 960E Komatsus. And obviously the environment that the customer is working on is harsh mining conditions with high dust and debris. Um, and the duration, we found that we got over 3,000 hours of operational use on one single filter. Some why factors, you're asking why. Customers ask, why change? What's the benefits? How will this help us? Some of those are mentioned on the screen. Reducing your component failure. You guys are going through lots of uh, spare parts, lots of injectors, lots of um, parts. We want to extend your equipment life. We want to minimize the downtime. We want to maximize your filter lifespan. 
Um, we want to increase your vehicle performance. We want to enhance the maintenance practices on site. We want to boost your environmental impact. Less filters, less waste, better cleanliness for the environment. And obviously, we want to strengthen your TCO value. And on that, what does the TCO mean? TCO means total cost of ownership. Now, the TCO iceberg shown on the computer uh, shows that price should only be about 15% consideration um, of you know when you make a decision. And let's look at the other aspects as well um, that should make up the 85% of the decision. First one on the left is warranty. Um, the first thing I should ask is, what supplier do you know of that brings up a warranty in a sales pitch? I know Donaldson does. Um, ours even covers the customer when your vehicles are under warranty by your OE. Uh, so please speak to your distributor or get hold of us to, to, to have a chat about that. And it's even available on our website. Um, and, and we can discuss um, the warranty document with you. Local partnerships, technology. Cameron will talk about our technology and how Donaldson is structured and how we can assist with technology training, all that kind of stuff. But our distributors um, offer the coverage for you, the availability of the product, the service on site, the logistics to get this, the, the Donaldson product there. Um, Donaldson is 110 years old, so just remember that number because I'll be using that as we, as we go along. I mentioned earlier about efficiency. So efficiency um, is something that people don't really understand and better ratios. So we just want to go through it so that you can understand it a bit. Um, efficiencies are usually printed on our cans um, or it's on our website. Most websites do not have it, though. Or they are, I'm talking about the competition. And sometimes you've got to ask yourself, why is it not on the website? So just make a note of that. Um, the number of efficiency is basically describing the number of particles upstream versus what gets captured in the filter um, is what we call to efficiency. So whatever comes out the other side determines how efficient the filter is. The higher the percentage, the more efficient the filter is. Um, so always compare that with your competitor's prices or your competitor's specifications. Um, Efficiency and better ratios. Uh, always compare that. Sorry, with your distribute with your competition. Um, you might be surprised what you discover when you actually delve into the efficiencies and better ratio side of things. You'll see on the left here, or on the bottom left, better ratio versus efficiency percentage. Some of those percentage numbers are, are, are really small, but if you look at the number of particles it represents. Um, you will be actually shocked to see how much, how many particles that actually encompasses. Um, we'll move over to the Donaldson first fit. Um, as you can see, this is a picture of a machine with a filter housing. Um, this is actually a Donaldson housing. So we are also filter manufacturers, but also first fit for OE. So we actually manufacture this housing. This filter housing has got a pre cleaner inside. Uh, and you can see that by the four little um, things at the bottom there where the, the pre-cleaned air actually exits. Um, so that's quite a nice uh, thing to note. Up to 90% of all the dirt that's collected passes through the Donaclone system on this system and exits before it actually hits the filter. So also saving your filter lifetime. So if there's anybody on here that has equipment that you and you don't know that there's Donaldson pre-cleaners available, and you're going through a heck of a lot of filters, speak to us and let us talk to you about some, some pre-cleaners. Um, we can add evacuator valves at the bottom as well, um, which will help to for clogging of the moisture, um, or to prevent the clogging of the moisture. So the primary filter and the cover that was installed on the actual machine, as you can see on the left, um, on the left here, sorry, I'm looking at the wrong screen. Um, the filter has a steel cover, um, and this cover on the on the left here was actually a lot thinner than ours. So what we did is we reverted back to the Donaldson one, which has a cone, uh, and the Donaldson cover, which also has a cone. So that obviously keeps the filter in place a, a, lot, a lot better. And the technology of the ceiling, which is our radial seal, also makes it a much better ceiling surface. Um, here you can see that it's a flat uh, surface on the inside of the filter that was fitted, and ours, you can see, obviously, the cone. Um, you'll see that the media is a, a white color. 
which tells you it's as a cellulose filter. The old actual seals versus the radial seals, you can see the difference here. Um, the, the, the old actual system, actual seal system had a seal glued onto it, where the new system is just a polyurethane seal right around, which also holds the, the filter in place. But if there's a slight deviation on the seal um, housing or on the housing, it will touch on the whole surface of the seal. So your sealing is much better. There won't be any air coming through in little cracks. And obviously the safety filter that fits on the inside will also have a much better sealing. On the picture, you'll see the Komatsu HD 1500. Um, it has one filter on each side. So only two filters for this machine. On the Komatsu 860E, there's two filters per side. On the Komatsu 960E, uh, there's three filters per side. Um, and we'll just move on to the Lieber T284s, which has two filters. You'll notice on the T284, you can see the dome. On the other machines, the dome is actually welded into the cover, so you won't actually see them. Uh, some of them do come with the dome visible. Um, just, to, just to note that we also have a Donaldson YouTube site where we have a lot of um, videos on how our systems work. Um, so if you need to reach out to us for... For that, uh, let us know and we'll get hold of uh, the, or we'll send you the website details or the YouTube details. Um, when we're talking about the efficiency, what we're talking about is changing the filters when they're full. So to explain an air filter, and that's any air filter in the whole world, the air filter efficiency when it's new is not as efficient as a fuel filter. So a fuel filter, you must remember, it must be efficient from where it go because it's only got one chance to go through that filter before it goes through injectors and before it goes out. With an air filter, um, obviously the air also comes in once, but remember that the, the air filter is least efficient when it's new. So what we're trying to, to, to tell you is if you're changing your air filters too soon, what you're really doing is changing them when they're least efficient. An air filter is more efficient as it starts clogging up um, where we use the dirt filters dirt principle. So as the, the, the media starts clogging up and as the particles start clog, uh, um, clogging the filter uh, media, it actually starts filtering out all the other bad elements and that way the filter becomes more efficient. Um, the only way I can explain it is try, like trying to fill up your car that has no fuel gauge and you know it can do about 500 kilometers, but at 300 or 400 kilometers, you go, maybe I should change or fill up. But in this case, you can't fill up. You have to actually throw that fuel out, which is a total loss, and then fill up and keep going. So what we're trying to teach you is let the air filter go to its full potential before you need to change over. And that's where some of the cost savings will come. Some of the tile parameters that we did on site was we selected a suitably aged vehicle. We shared oil samples before, during, and after the trial. We monitored the restriction at agreed intervals, and we recorded the data. Uh, we monitored the equipment dashboards as well. We reset and tested the gauge periodically just to make sure that everything was working okay. They're not hellish expensive, but 30 to $50 each, depending on which one you get. And then obviously the trial ends at the agreed restriction uh, gauge reading with the end user. That's what the restriction gauge looks like. Um, up to 4 kPa, the gauges are checked weekly on, on the trials. The gauges are then reset, as mentioned, and piping is also checked uh, to ensure no blockages periodically. At 5.5 kPa restriction, the gauges are checked daily during the trial. And then once the restriction screen was almost entirely red, the, filter chain, the filters were changed and the trial was deemed as uh, ended. In terms of the other checks, again, checking restriction gauge, taking pictures and updating the record sheets, checking the odometers or taking actual readings from the FMS system, fuel management system, advising the end user when the next inspection date is and sending updates to Donaldson as well periodically. This is what the distributor did to our partner. They painted the covers um, in their colors um, and put a big sticker on to say, please do not change. They made nice boxes for the restriction monitors to be uh, installed in. At the bottom here, you will see that uh, they also did the exhaust tubing or the tubing from the exhaust to go towards the, the uh, restriction indicators. They labeled the, the filters or number them or the date so that they know when uh, that filter was uh, installed. 
um, et cetera, et cetera. You can see the other pictures there just for your uh, info. Let's go to the actual trial results. Um, so the first one we're going to talk about is the, is the 860E. All the trial results will look very similar. So what we do is we, we start the trial. In this case, it was on April the 3rd. On April the 11th was the first check. Um, we skip a few. We go to check number four. The filter was ready at 500 hours, still not reached restriction. Skip a few, go to check number eight. 996 hours, all still going well on May 30th. Skip a few to check number 12, July the 12th, 1,800 hours almost. Check 16, the filter was sitting at 2,469 hours. Now, remember, practice on, on site is to change it 500. Um, eventually, on the 2nd of, or the 5th of September, the restriction monitor was uh, full, and uh, they decided to change out at 2,827 hours on the filter. What they did is they plotted it, um, the actual restriction monitor readings as well on a graph. You will notice here that one is slightly higher than the other. Now, depending on which way you drive on the mine sites and where you are in the world, we drive on the left sometimes or the right, depending on, on which way it is. So the one filter always picks up the dirt from the other truck that's passing by. And that's why a lot of the filters have one side that is always getting restricted a little bit quicker than the other side. Um, we then also weighed the filters, which we will discuss towards the end. We're not going to touch too much on that, but you will see some interesting stats. Uh, the summary on the 860E was the filter got to 2,827 hours over a five-month trial period. Um, the previous changeout were at 500 hours, noting that this is a cellulose media filter, and also to note that the competitor's high-efficiency filter was no comparison even to our normal cellulose filter, which is also something to take note of. During this period of five months, where if a customer had to change it every 500 hours, we would have saved the end user, or we did save the end user, or was five filter change outs, um, which was at a cost of $1,850 per vehicle, which is five primary filters and two safety filters. Um, we will go through those numbers later on as well, if you want to take notes. So the second trial we did was on a Komatsu 960E this time. Um, again, same story. We did the trials, started on September the 10th. Check 1 was done at 61 to 62 hours. Check 4 at, uh, at the Adom uh, 770 hours, sorry. The restriction monitor still hadn't moved. Um, so imagine changing the filter at 770 hours and that, and that restriction monitor is telling you the filter's not even started to get clogged yet. What a waste that would have been, if you understand what I mean by the, 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 the filling up the fuel um, analogy. December the 5th, at, uh, 1,441 hours, 2.5 kPa on the one, 6.2 on the other restriction monitor. Check 14 on February the 12th. Uh, 2,801 hours, both restriction monitors eventually showing that it was full. And again, on the 15th of, uh, or the 12th of February, eventually the, the trial was ended at 2,800 hours. They did the same thing with plotting the restriction monitor readings over the period. And you can see towards the end, um, they were eventually changed and they actually met up um, at 6.2. Um, the results summary, we reached 2,801 hours on this trial. It lasted five months and a week. Um, it's a cellulose media gain. And again, competitors' high-efficiency filter that was on site was no comparison to our standard cellulose media. During this time, we saved the end user almost four filter changeouts, which is an equivalent of $1,245 per vehicle, which was four primaries and one safety. Because of the success, we well, the, the, the end users eventually said, let's do the trials on the Libra T284. The T284 was not considered at the time. Um, we used the Donaldson blue filters on this trial because the OE was using the, the, the equivalent of the high efficiency filters. So we did it on like for like. Our filters performed for over 2,000 hours and we also installed manual restriction monitors on these machines, even though they have the electronic indicators on the machines. Again, same story, June the 1st, we started the trial. June 22nd at 416, we did a check. Um, August the 8th, 
at 1,288 hours. You could see the restriction monitor starting to show some, uh, some restriction. Uh, September the 12th, 1,934 hours, they did another check. And in this case, the T284 uh, dash, there was no signal to change the filter when it was at 6.2 kPa um, on the actual dashboard at 1,934. It wasn't time to service the machine, so end user pushed it until the next service, and the next service was at 2,098 hours. Um, and the filter was still um, working perfectly fine. Um, it wasn't causing any starvation, etc., etc. No overheating on the machine. So everything was still perfectly fine, and we changed it out to 2,098 hours. Dust collection on this was uh, as per this little uh, screen, and we'll go back into it on the next screen because I'll touch on all three results in a minute. Um, the DBA, which is Donaldson Blue Air, uh, you can see the media here is blue. So the normal cellulose filter is a natural product, so that's why it's white. And we just and the Donaldson Blue uh, product is a synthetic um, uh, media. And that's why we call it uh, the blue media, and that's why it's called the Donaldson Blue Range. Uh, this trial duration was two and a half months, and we saved the end user on this one three filter changeouts, which was at a value of $1,840 per machine, which is three primaries and a safety. So here comes the interesting part. So when we talk about um, the Donaldson Blue Range, it's depth filtration. You hear all of these fancy words. Here we can see it um, on the actual trials. So the first two filters, the white ones, were cellulose filters. Uh, the T284, we used the blue filter. Over the similar time period, the, the dust collected on the cellulose was 9.2 and 15.1 on the 860E. Um, on the 960E, 11.9, um, 8 kilos, 7.5, et etc. et cetera. And look at the blue filter. Over the same time period, look how much dust was collected um, in terms, in, in comparison to the cellulose media. So this is where your, your depth filtration really comes into work. And that's where we'd like to explain to you guys how exactly that works. Um, and this is where a lot of efficiency comes in. And as you saw by the screen on uh, uh, earlier, where that small little percentage, 99% and 99.5% seems very small. Here you can see how big the difference actually is with those little um, numbers. In terms of cost savings, now remember, this is per the cost savings I showed you were per vehicle, and they have 15 vehicles on site. Um, so that's what the cost saving was for the 860Es, the 960s, the HD 1500s, and the T284s, respectively. Remember, we can actually double this number uh, for the T284s because it was only two and a half months. So we can actually double that amount. It was a saving that was done over the five months only not a full year, and it was a saving only by changing the air filters only. Now, remember, these exclude savings on downtime, labor, financing of filters, because a lot of mines like to keep lots of stock of filters, and any other unseen costs, $74,000. So if you're looking to save money, this is how we can show you how to do it. Um, and this is not even talking about our liquid filters, our hydraulic filters, um, our lube filters, et cetera, et cetera. Lifespan of the machine doesn't even come into, the, into these kind of, um, calculations yet. So you can see how TCO actually starts kicking in um, by not looking only at the price of a filter. In summary, the cost savings were evident. The service intervals were dramatically increased. The mine's efficiency and productivity was enhanced. The end user was more informed and empowered by knowing and learning all these things from, from us. Uh, the trust in Donaldson on site was increased exponentially. And the TCO, in conclusion, we'd like you guys to understand and work on efficiency and TCO as the key and not the price of the filter. Ask your Donaldson distributors and partners for solutions to your challenges, and we will assist you. And like I said before, Donaldson's 110 years old, and I can give you 110 reasons why Donaldson should be your partner to success going forward. And from my side, that's it. And um, yes, thank you very much. Thank you, Paul. So I will make my presentation.
Thank you. Do you see my screen? Okay. Or if you'd like to share the other screen, we, we've got time. Sorry, what did you say? It's not in presentation mode. We're looking at both ah, okay. uh, slides. There we go. Perfect. Okay, perfect. So, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. My name is uh, Axel Wustein, and I'm a general manager at AES Group. Today, I'm excited to talk about how AES Group can be your trust partner for all your Donaldson product needs. We've been working closely with Donaldson for many years, and we are committed to provide our customers with the highest quality products and services. Um, let's start with a, a brief overview of AES Group. We are leading providers of industrial solutions with a strong fo focus on filtration. We have a proven track record of delivering innovative solutions to our customers across various industries. As a key partner of Donaldson, we offer a wide range of products and services, including high quality filtration uh, solution to meet your specific needs, expert technical support to ensure optimal performance, efficient logistics and supply chain management. Our strong partnership with Donaldson allows us to offer you the latest infiltration technology. We are proud to be an official distributor of Donaldson product, and we are committed to providing our customer with the highest level of services. By partnering with AES, you can benefit from faster delivery times, expert technical support, competitive pricing, and customized solution. Our expertise extends across various industries, including mining, construction, industrial, and agriculture. We cater to both open pit and underground mining operation. By leveraging Donaldson Advanced Filtration Solution, we help our clients optimize their equipment, performance, reduce downtime, and improve overall productivity. Our facilities in the region to better serve our customer, we have established a strong regional presence with facilities in key locations. Abidjan, Ouagadougou, Bamako, Dakar, Conakry, and Niamey. We also have a warehouse in Bamako, in Ouagadougou, and we are excited to announce that we are expanding our operation. We have a new uh, warehouse in Ivory Coast, which is expected to open in the coming months. We understand that every customer has a unique needs. That's why we offer flexible supply chain solution to meet your specific requirement. Whether it's FCA from Donaldson facilities, XWorks, CIF, DAP, DDP, consignment stock, or dedicated stock in VMI, we can adapt to your needs and ensure a seamless supply chain. The West African market is increasingly prioritizing local content regulation. We are proud to be fully compliant with this requirement and committed to supporting local economies. Our operation and supply chains are structured to meet and exceed the standards. Um, optimize your operation with AES VMI. At AES, we understand the critical importance of maintaining optimal equipment, performance, and minimizing downtime in the mining industry. Our VMI services are designed to streamline your supply chain process and ensure that your operation runs smooth. Our VMI solution, inventory management, we closely monitor stock levels and automatically replenish inventory to prevent shortage. Supply chain optimization, we streamline your supply chain, reducing lead times and minim minimizing costs. Customized solution, we tailor our VMI programs to meet the specific needs of each mining site, ensuring maximum uptime and equipment reliability. A strong regional presence. AS is proud to have a robust presence 
across numerous mining sites in West Africa. Our expensive, uh, extensive networks and underground expertise allows us to deliver exceptional services and support to our clients in the region. We have successfully implemented our VMI solution in various countries, contributing to the, the enhanced productivity and operational efficiency of many mining operations. Commitment to excellence. Our partnership with Donaldson, coupled with our deep understanding of the min mining sector, positions us as a reliable and efficient provider of VMI services. We are committed to maintaining the highest standard of service and support, ensuring that our clients can focus on their core operation without worrying about inventory management. In addition to Donaldson, we represent other renowned brands in the, in the industry, such as Xylem, Getman, Terex, Bortlangir, and some others. Our commitment to quality and customer satisfaction has earned us the trust of leading companies in the region. Some of our key customers include Barrick, Esakan, Endeavor, Resolute, and others. Thank you all for your time and attention. I hope you have gained a better understanding of how IES can be your trust partner for the Nelson solution. Please don't hesitate to reach out to me or my team if you have any question or would like to discuss a specific need. Thank you. So thanks for the update and Paul as well. I, uh, I trust that through the two different topics there, you got an idea of the expertise that Donaldson brings into Africa and how we benefit our customers. So thank you once again. For me, some of the key takeaways that, that we had there is we live with choices. And in this case, maybe the choice is peace of mind. You know, if we're going with renowned partners, well-known partners, great technology, Great technology, I'll say it again, and we're looking at low operational costs. We're looking at reliability in quality and supply. I think what Axel made clear for me is it's not just the reliability of the product. It's the fact that we have reliability of supply. And at Donaldson, we certainly do put a lot of effort into choosing and evolving with our distributors or our partners. So thanks again to, to both presenters. What I would like to discuss now in a little bit of detail is we look at that and it, it's a lot. When Paul spoke about the trials, I mean, Axel's got a massive footprint there. We, we're talking well-established partners, well-established processes. A question may be, how would one get started on this process? And what we found at Donaldson is that a three-phase approach has worked well. And every time we go into a mine site, if anyone's been on any mine sites in Africa, you'll know that no two mine sites are the same. So this changes from site to site, but we have come up with high level principles that we have found are effective. And phase one is about validation. You know, this is where we really do assess the unique operational realities and establish data back needs so that we make sure our solutions are precisely aligned with your environment. Certain things we do, we look at the, we validate and we, we survey the filters that are used. We look at um, equivalents and importantly, we start collating data because often there's been no data on the site and we need to understand what's happening. And also material description updating. If we're gonna be replacing and then improving on um, filters in the, in the timeline, we need to know what is it that we're gonna be replacing. So phase one is all about validation. Phase two, we move to implementation. We've gathered some data points. Here we start rolling out a tailored improvement plan. Could involve trials for equipment and equipment assessments, and it's all aimed at improving and providing you with practical and immediate benefits. Some of the things we look at is a, a customer's a equipment survey to start with. What filtration do you have per, what filters do you have on each piece of equipment? Where do we have equivalents? Paul spoke about cellulose media. Do we have endurance media that would fit in the same housing that gives you an immediate win? We look at cleanliness reports before and after swapping out, and then we present to you on further filtration enhancements, and we implement and we track these enhancements. So that's phase two of the three phases, and phase three 
is where we really move to continuous improvement. We take responsibility with our distribution partners for monitoring progress, providing consistent updates, sometimes in the, 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 the form of a monthly meeting, who knows, what, whatever, however the end user would like to engage with their distribution partner, their filtration partner, we work with them and we evaluate and we move towards extended service intervals and continuous improving. These are two key elements of phase three. And there's more because we know that it doesn't end there. So what sort of support do we offer? In terms of the three phases, and if we could even say beyond, we heard Axel talk about ERP system integration. If it's required, it's certainly one of the options that we have. On-site stockholding, we heard VMI, an acronym we use often at Donaldson, is Vendor Managed Inventory. After hours service, this is where our key, it's key that we have the right local partners because people with feet on the ground near your mine site are the best people to come in there and offer you the service that you need. Here again, I mentioned the monthly meetings with planning and supply chain to make sure that inventory is running well and it's regular interfaces with the maintenance team. We, we need to speak to the people on the ground, if possible, even equipment operators. The more we learn about the equipment, the better support we can give. And when we move over to the second leg of our support that we, we, we propose, is technical support. Yara spoke about it, you know, monthly reporting and meeting with a customer. We want to monitor the ISO levels. We want to do ongoing equipment surveys. We want to look in, if we have the right detail, we can measure filtration spend per ton mined. And that we find a really interesting measure because again, I'll refer back to Paul. He mentioned the cost of the filter shouldn't always be the defining factor. An endurance filter is going to cost you more, but if you look at the tonnage you are mining with an endurance filter, the ton per hour, the, the cost per ton gets far lower. So these are the sort of things we look at. We want to manage your improvement projects with you. Let's put the filtration in. Let's monitor it. Let's manage it with you. Regular tank farm audits. Clean fuel is essential. In other sharing my experience in other parts of the world, fuel seems to be cleaner. Australia, Europe, we know across Africa we still have gallons and liters and thousands of liters of contaminated fuel with, with the best preparation. This is what's delivered to site. And regular tank farm audits, we want to help you filter what goes into your tanks. We want to help you polish it while it's in the tank. And then we want to help you filter it on the way out again. So regular tank farm audits, we measure the cleanliness and we offer the right filtration to improve on it. And one of the things that we've seen massive benefit when we work with, with our partners is optimization of service kits. Our experience is that the operator of the equipment just wants to know that he's having a 500 hour service. Our partners are defining the, the, the optimal composition of that service kit, upselling on um, endurance media, doing whatever, but importantly to the end user and the maintenance people, they are getting the kit and not having to worry about any of the detail of what's in the kit. So that's the sort of the, the sort of commitment that we offer beyond what we've been told today. What I would like to do now is um, shift gears and we will move to a Q&A in a few minutes, but we've spoken a lot about Donaldson and we premium and we global. So I'm not gonna bore you with a lot of corporate slides. It's just, I think three or four corporate slides that give you a high level of some of um, Donaldson's key factors. We are a purpose-driven company. And the purpose is advancing filtration for a cleaner world. Every product we develop, every innovation we introduce is a step towards a cleaner, more sustainable future. And Paul mentioned 110 years. I know we're somewhere between 105 and 110 years, but every investment Donaldson makes is about moving us along this purpose. If we look at some of our key numbers, roughly a 3.4 billion revenue dollar revenue turnover, 2,800 active patents. We've spoken about technology and innovation. There's one of the strengths of our technology, 80 plus global locations, and that's referring only to Donaldson, not our distribution partners. I think I mentioned already, we have about 100 distribution partners across Africa. This slide is talking about Donaldson company, 80 plus global locations. One of the things that we've seen ramp up over the last, um, let's say, five to seven years is massive investment into 
R&D. We're investing on average about $80 million into R&D on an annual basis. And this is all about keeping us innovating and keeping us relevant in the market. We've got roughly 100 research and development labs globally to keep that innovation going. And that's where we can spend our money. And as a, a Donaldson ambassador on this call, it, 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 it gives me a great satisfaction to know that since 2014, Donaldson has acquired 11 companies. So it's not just about growing on what we're doing and improving. It's also about branching out into other technologies and acquiring companies that fit with our company. If we move over to global footprint, I don't need to read through all the numbers. I think for this, uh, this presentation, the important one is EMEA, Europe, Middle East, and Africa, 17 locations, and we have two manufacturing locations. One of those locations is in Cape Town. We do produce most of our air filtration for the South and Southern Africa market in Cape Town. And then we, uh, we work together with this global Donaldson organization, really, and we hear it often, but it's a global reach with a local touch. Our strategically implemented manufacturing and distribution centers allow us to move fast, be agile, and deliver the best quality filtration products in each corner of the world. And we back it up by a vast distribution network that makes sure we are present where our customers need us. And if I'm sitting across the desk from anyone in the mining world these days, sustainability is a topic. I don't even need to sit across the desk. I can open up any mining website. Sustainability is key. Yeah, Donaldson's purpose, filtration for a thriving future. Sustainability really is at the heart of our narrative. It's about our commitment to a future where filtration technology plays a crucial role in preserving the planet. Our solutions are not just about meeting needs. They are about foreseeing and shaping a sustainable future. And many of our acquisitions are going in the direction of us shaping a sustainable future. Our sustainable strategy, filtration for a thriving future, is grounded by our company purpose, which I already mentioned, advancing filtration for a cleaner world. Our strategy represents the choices made to ensure products and practices have a positive impact today and create a thriving future for the people of the planet. So more than just lip service at Donaldson, we really do put a lot of effort into sustainability. So as I come to the closing slide, I would like to once again thank our panelists, thank Kramer Media for the help on the back end and for, for giving us this opportunity and for um, organizing it so seamlessly. Your support has really been, uh, it's, it's really made it possible. And we will move into the Q&A. I will coordinate it together with Shannon. If you would like to submit any of your questions in the Q&A, please do go ahead. Cameron, there is a question from Albert. Um, he actually asked it to Paul. Um, and I see, Paul, you have answered that question, but maybe we can ask it out loud for the rest of the attendees. Um, he asked if you can please explain the uneven numbers of primary and secondary filters saved on the trials. Are the machines not taking the filters in sets? Okay, so thanks for that uh, question, Albert. Um, so every time you change a primary filter, you don't need to change the safety filter at the same time. So Donaldson's, uh, we suggest that you only change the safety every third. In other words, you change one, two, three primary filters. And after the third one, when you change the fourth primary, you change the, the safety. The safety filter is really only there to protect any dirt and ingression from going into the machine while you're changing the primary filter and once you're cleaning it out. So it's basically only there as a safety. It's not there to actually be used as a filter. It's only got one layer of, of media. So it's merely only there as a protector. Um, and that's why we only suggest you, you change it every third. If it's damaged, yes, change it. If you can see visible damage, then change it. Um, and I hope that answers your question. I hope that's understandable. Um, Great. Cameron, it looks like we got another question um, that came through on the chat. Um, should I just take that, ask that one as well? It's how does Donaldson's focus on total cost of ownership rather than just filter pricing 
help customers in the mining and industrial sectors realize greater long-term savings and productivity improvements. Thank you do uh, take that one on, Shannon, and I, I hope that we covered some of it in the presentation. W what we're talking about here is that the filter may cost more, but it's going to last longer and it's going to give better protection. And in very simple terms, you know, just in this forum, if we're extending service intervals, we're reducing the cost of the filter, but if we're improving our filtration performance, we're improving the performance of the vehicle and reducing wear and tear and improving uptime. So if the person um, asking the question would like more detail, in my mind, that, that's kind of a high level summary. And if you still have a question, please feel free to reach out to any other panelists after the call. It really is something we're passionate about and we would love to talk to you more about it. And then, um, Shannon, if it's okay with you, I'll jump on to the next question in the, the Q&A. Um, how do we cover wireless engine filter monitoring systems? I will share that in the past, Donaldson um, Global, we did look at commercial commercializing wireless engine filter monitoring and I think we, we learned some lessons in the process. So we have, I suppose I could... We, we have gone back to the drawing board a little in terms of how do we implement the technology we have. So it wasn't missed in the presentation, very well spotted by the person asking the question. It's something that we are working on and we see the clear need and the clear benefit in the field if we can monitor wires, wirelessly. And Axel, if you would um, possibly like to talk about how you integrate with your customers' um, data to ensure that the, the products are supplied and there's no stockouts, I can answer from a Donaldson perspective, but that's really limited because we're not engaging directly with end users. So Axel, could you possibly say a little bit more about how you integrate with the data on site? What do you mean exactly? Um, you mentioned you're monitoring the, the filtration coverage yeah. of the filtration stock on site. How are you monitoring yes. that stock? Is it automated? Because I have examples of integrating with ERPs, okay. but we're not dealing with end users. Okay. Um, how we do usually is that we always keep three months of consumption okay. of the customer on site. So, uh, of course, before to, 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 to put our stock on the mining side, we make sure to know uh, each reference and each quantity they consume per month. And then we always uh, keep three months of this consumption uh, okay. stock on the feed side. Yeah. And we monitor it, which reference are using most and less. And we keep uh, our stock level always. Uh... Thank you. Um, Tatiana, I think we do have your contact details since it's not something that we always do because we don't deal with the end users. It depends on how we partner with our different partners. There certainly are solutions we've implemented where we can integrate, but it's not something commonly done. So I'll make a commitment to reach out to you and discuss it in further detail if that's okay. Great, thank you. Cameron, it looks like that's all that's come through on the Q&A. Um, maybe you just want to give last round for, for all our speakers and then we can maybe close off. We will obviously be able to contact everybody who makes a comment or um, puts a question in once we finish. And we will be able to get in touch with you afterwards. Thank you. So let, let me kick off the round. Thanks to everyone for their focus. An hour these days is worth a lot of money to most people. Thank you for your focus. Thank you for spending the time. We certainly hope we've told you a little bit more about Donaldson in Africa. And with that, I'll use it as the lead to ask Axel, uh, one of our key partners and distributors, if you want to say anything in closing. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you for your time. It was a pleasure to discuss with you and to present to our company. And uh, do not hesitate to reach us if you have any question or if we can support you. We are here for that. Thank you, Donaldson. Right, Paul, any closing words? Not really. Um, I think just thank you again to Crema Media for making this platform available to us. Thank you for all the, the panelists. And uh, yes, uh, just a cheeky, maybe it might be cheeky, might not. But uh, any company that wants you to use less filters 
um, you got to think why they got to do that. So we're always thinking about the environment, which is part of our um, also our morals, ethics, and just a company policy and uh, just the way we work. So we're here to to, to really save customers, and um, if we're gonna make it more efficient, that's one way we are, we actually do it. So yeah, thank you for everything, or for everybody from joining from from near and far as well. Thanks. And Paul, I'll wrap up with your, your phrase. Anyone on the call that's partnering with Donaldson in any way, as Paul says it, your success is our success. So we want to help you succeed. Thank you very much. And I'll hand back over to you, Shannon, to close out. Thanks so much, Cameron. That brings us to the end of the webinar. I'd like to say thank you to Cameron Diesel, to Paul Pereira, and to Axel Wustain for an interesting discussion. Thank you also to the attendees for taking the time to join us for this discussion on sustainable mining operations. If you're interested in hearing more about Donaldson, please visit their website at www.donaldson.com. For over 100 years, Donaldson has been solving customers' complex filtration needs and is today one of the largest providers of unique filtration technologies and high-quality filters and parts. The recording of today's webinar will be made available to all stakeholders. And if you have any additional questions, please be in touch. You can reach us at shannon at creamamedia.co.za. Thank you so much for your time and goodbye.